Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. I'm joined by my friend John Crump from Ammo Land News. Uh, John, this is the first time we're doing this in 2020. I know, man. I know, I know. We've... Often. Yeah, we have not been getting these up as often. Lots of different things going on, so I apologize for that. We'll we'll try to get more of these up today. We're talking about several things, but the biggest one um, in this uh, breaking news with Ammo Land is going to be the Cal Colorado's red flag law used against police officer. <laughs> so yep. what? It went into effect January first. It's been used against a police officer. Already, we're going to discuss that, but and there's some other things going on. We've got stuff going on in your neck of the woods in Virginia that we're going to discuss. Stuff happening here in Florida that we'll discuss, as well as Shot Show coming up in a couple days, literally here, less than a week. Oh yeah. Okay, so um, you want to start off with uh, what's happening in Colorado? The red flag law there did go into effect January first, right? That is correct. Uh, back in 2017, uh, there was a police shooting involving Corporal Phil Morris of the Colorado State University Police. Mm -hmm. He encountered a 19-year-old uh, that was acting really erratic with a mm -hmm. knife. His name was Jeremy Holmes. Okay, on the campus of the university? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously, because that would be his territory, right? Yeah. His jurisdiction. Uh, mm -hmm. So he had this big big hunting knife so Morris asked Holmes to drop the knife 36 times in two minutes mm -hmm. there's body camera footage at all this right uh, Holmes was saying stuff like I want to be shot I want to be shot I want to be okay. shot so uh, unfortunately this seemed that that seemed like an incident of suicide by cop it, it de definitely yeah. was Morris mm -hmm. went to holster his gun so he can pull out his taser to try to taser Holmes but when he went to holster his guns Holmes charged him Mm -hmm. So Morris fired and unfortunately killed Holmes. Mm -hmm. uh, the district attorney cleared him of all charges. It was definitely a good shoot because if you watch the video, mm -hmm. you can see he had no choice. An internal investigation also determined it was suicide by cop, and he and Morris was cleared of all wrongdoing and was put back on the job. Right, and I think I was looking up. I was looking this up uh, before we did it. There was more than one officer there. Yes. So, yeah, it was, it was clearly uh, what, you know, within the bounds of what they're supposed to do as police officers, right? Yeah, there's multiple camera footage, and the camera footage is public record, so anyone can go see it. In fact, it's actually on MLN News, MLN.com right now. Okay, so in terms of the red flag laws or uh, risk protection orders that uh, folks that have been put around uh that have been put into effect around the country, um, and lots of us have said that there's going to be um, there's going to be misuse here, right? That people are going to use this uh, to make political points, to get revenge against people, etc. Um, yeah, exactly what happened? Yeah. So you're so that's what happened here with this red flag case. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the mother of Jeremy Holmes uh, filed a extreme risk protection order or ERPO. Mm -hmm. uh, under Colorado red flag laws, it's supposed to be a family member, household member, or law enforcement can file an extreme protection order. Right. On the actual form you fill out, though, it says if you have a child in common mm -hmm. with the respondent. Yeah, so in other words, you're both parents or something like that. You're the mother, That's father. Mm -hmm. But uh, Holmes, uh, she is stating... Susan Holmes is the woman's name. She is stating that that's not clear, and she interpreted it as having in common a child, which her child is was Jeremy Holmes. Mm -hmm. And since uh, since Morris since shot, this right she, since he shot Holmes, they have him in common. But that doesn't make you that doesn't make him the parent of right. Yeah, but, but or step parent of or anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. the form doesn't specifically say that. Okay. So she's she's saying, hey, my interpretation says this. Uh, so she checked the box and checked that he was a credible threat of or the unlawful, reckless use of a firearm. Mm -hmm. 
of or the I, don't, I have no idea why it says that but it's just mm-hmm. really weird how it says that <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, then she wrote uh, Phil Morris used his firearm to recklessly and violently threaten and kill 19 year old Jeremy Holmes mm-hmm. in the explanation uh, she also marked that Morris might have a history of domestic abuse this is really problematic because it, it's not you know does he have a history of domestic abuse or does mm-hmm. he not if a might which you know i can say you might have a history of domestic abuse right and i'm not anyone lying. might I might yeah <laughs> or i might but yeah it mean i might have superpowers right um so, that- so 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 the thing here so did colorado execute this um risk order protection act against this police officer yet or we're in the process now it's, it's in the process mm-hmm. he has to go to court tomorrow to defend his right to own firearms Mm -hmm. if he doesn't show up or doesn't prove his innocence then his firearms are going to be taken right which in america is supposed to be not guilty until proven guilty or yeah innocent 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 until proven guilty absolutely but this way Mm -hmm. it's guilty until proven innocent right and this is what we were all saying people are going to be going to use this for politics uh people are going to use this for revenge um, you know, there's going to be situations here where people can, at, in the in the least, cost you time off of work, uh, lawyers' fees, etc. In the worst case, um, have your your uh, Second Amendment rights taken away from you. Um, the 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 crux of this situation, though, is that this is a police officer here. So, do we do we really feel bad about this? Uh, you know, how, how are you looking at this? Because I'm sure there's some folks out there like. Yeah, well, I don't feel sorry for this guy. He's a police officer. At the same time, you know, police officers, they're citizens. We're all citizens. This is why we were telling folks, don't rush into this thing. There's already things in place to deal with these situations. When you create this and make it so easy, people are going to misuse it. Well, I I definitely do feel bad for him. Uh, He lost the wages, and in the law, there's no way for him to recoup those wages. Mm -hmm. So lost money i think he's going to end up defeating it but you never Mm. know with the judge he might get a judge that are is anti-police yeah that's also wants to make a political statement yeah yeah you never know yeah um without trial or anything else it's just hey look yeah yeah it definitely sucks think about all the other people that are gonna this is gonna happen to that don't have um that, that are not police officers right that this is going to happen to, or maybe don't have a way to even make this a public thing where they can get support. Um, is there any mechanism in this law that Colorado or any other state, for that matter, puts into effect to, uh, for if someone misuses it, they get punished somehow? Yeah, well, she can be charged with perjury, mm-hmm. but then you have to prove that she knowingly misread the uh, have child in common mm-hmm. box. Mm-hmm. Just very hard. Right. So that could come down to lawyers. Um, do, do you do you guys know in your investigation before writing this article? Do you know if she filled this out with a lawyer or just on her own? She just went and filled this form out. That information is not available. I know this is uh, the fifth ERPO to be issued in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Um, the four others have been passed and one's been denied. Actually, mm-hmm. it's probably the sixth, but there's mm-hmm. been five other ones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This. Th- I don't know, man. Uh, this is this is exact reason. I don't know any other way to say it. I'm sure lots of people out there screaming. This is exactly why they're making this too e- too easy. Lots of places just rushing into it. There's already things in place. There's already things that police departments are supposed to be doing to protect people if they think that they're at risk, etc. Now, let's say those police departments aren't doing it. Well, you know, the people are in charge of the police department, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's how that works. If you live somewhere, you have a mayor, you have other government officials that you elect that they're supposed to be running these pol- police departments, and if they're not protecting people and doing their job, then you do something about it. Although we've talked about it here, you know, technically, you know, police departments are not required to uh, serve and protect the people. So I'm not really even sure what the point is of the police department. To respond to after crimes happen. Yeah, I, and now to serve to you know to uh, to 
to uh, take away people's property and take away their rights without any kind of due process, I guess. Yeah, you know? I feel very strongly about that, as you know. Yes, I do know. I do know this. I do know this, John. Okay, so um, so you've got an article. This article is up, or it's going up soon on this? It's it's up. We had to get it up this morning. Okay, very interesting. I'm sure there'll be other places breaking this, but I, I suggest for the folks out there, you want to get this from a point of view of uh, folks who are into guns, into the Second Amendment, etc. What's your big takeaway from this, John? What, what do you think is the big lesson here or the, the moral of the story? It goes to show how these laws can be abused mm -hmm. by people who have an agenda other than safety. Yeah. You really you think so, man? Do you think people would actually use these things to just make other human beings' lives difficult out there? Humans never do that, Hank. Yeah, I know. I know. Do we? Is there any chance that we're going to get the Supreme Court to look at um, these things anytime soon, maybe put a stop to this? I, I hope so. It, mm -hmm. There are several ones that are being appealed, but mm -hmm. none of them are high enough. Usually what happens is if they're appealed, then the states or whatnot, they drop them. Oh. Because they know it's unconstitutional. Yeah, they don't want to They don't want to make a case law. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, um, that's, that's mm -hmm. the issue. You, you have to get it to the Supreme Court by having the other side wanting to fight you on it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, man, it, it, it sucks. I, I kind of like, uh, I don't know, I hate to say that I'm in the middle of this, but I think I am in the middle. Um, I think we need police officers to, you know, to realize that they also can be victimized by this, just like everyone else. They're in the same category as everyone else. I know some places have made it more difficult. I don't know if uh, Colorado made it more difficult to do things like this against police officers, which I think is also a whole other thing that we could go down, because why should they really be exempt from anything like this, right? It's the same situation. Yeah, it's the same situation with, am with uh, ammo capacity in a magazine. You know, why Why should I be limited to five rounds, but the police officer is not limited to five rounds? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, very interesting. I I, I would like to hear what the folks out there think about this story. Uh, what's what's everyone else's takeaway on this? Um, and I know this is gonna, you know, this is gonna be something that some people are gonna be talking about. All right. So one of the other things that's going on out there that for a while now, Virginia, what is happening in Virginia, your state, John? There is a huge rally going on on 20th, which is Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, GOA is going to be there. VCDL put it all together. So hats mm -hmm. off to them. They did a really good job. Mm -hmm. uh, Firearm Policy Coalition is going to be there. Everyone's going to be there. Uh, the estimates are between 50 and 100,000 people are going to be there. The state police estimates are 120,000. I don't know if they're going to hit 120,000, but uh, conservatively – 50,000, uh, probably somewhere in the middle between 50 and 100,000. Mm -hmm. uh, the Democrats passed a rule that you couldn't carry a gun in the Capitol buildings. First mm -hmm. time you haven't been able to carry a gun. Yeah, that went up about, a, what, a week ago? Yeah. Okay. And now the governor has declared a state of emergency for Monday mm -hmm. and banned guns from the Capitol grounds. Mm -hmm. uh, because of potential violence, rioting, and insurrection. And so, <laughs> I guess he so, thinks it's going to be like Bacon's Rebellion and we're going to burn the governor's right. mansion or whatnot. Yeah. Now, this has been going on for G Virginia for a few months. If you've been living on the Iraq and you're not aware of it, um, basically, you know, we had elections or they had elections in Virginia it, the state got turned over to Democrats. You know, I guess people didn't weren't paying enough attention, didn't get out there and vote. On the other side, to be honest with you, I don't know if it would have made a, a ton of difference in Virginia. Uh, but you think it would have? Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, the Democrats in Virginia were 70 percent more likely to vote in the last election. Oh, OK. So basically, that's on Republicans or people who believe in the Constitution, libertarians, yeah, gun guys in Virginia. You didn't get your butts out there. Virginia went over to Democrats 
Um, and the governor of Virginia, I mean, this is a very storied person. This is a guy who's a, an abortion doctor. He's, you know, he's fine with uh, abortions, even like right after birth. Huh? He's fine with infant side. Yeah, absolutely. So he's fine with that. He's also a guy that enjoys putting on blackface for whatever reason. He's done all those. He said he was dressing things. up as Michael Jackson, but never explained yeah. why he was standing next to a guy dressed up as a KKK member. Exactly. So all of that, the Virginia Democrats let that stand because, of course, they plan to use this guy to ram through uh, gun control. Um, there's no, an assault. Governor has four charges of rape against them, too. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, these are these are like pretty terrible people. But Virginia Democrats aren't going to do anything about these guys. Um, they're trying to ram through this um, was assault weapons ban. And they've kind of like activated the, the, the folks in Virginia that do believe in the Constitution and uh, freedom and liberty. And those guys have been protesting and doing things uh, from the beginning here. Has there ever been any kind of violence? There has not been any type of violence whatsoever. In fact, uh, all the meetings across the state have been very peaceful. Um, mm -hmm. There have been thousands of people turning out to city council meetings and, and county board of directors meetings, mm -hmm. so much so that there's 127 uh, two-way sanctuary localities in Virginia, 96% of the state. Mm -hmm. It's now a two-way sanctuary, and wow. they said not going to enforce any gun laws that come from Richmond. Right. So, so folks have gotten activated. They're they're practicing their their God-given, you know, American-given rights to to protest. Right. The uh, the injustices that's uh, trying to be forced on them in Virginia. Um, they've done that peacefully. What's the basis here of the governor thinking that there's going to be some kind of insurrection, violence, etc., to come in now and just change the rules to benefit himself and his party here? There is a group that has 10 members on Facebook mm -hmm. that uh, said that they're going to hold an open carry march mm -hmm. in their, like South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he That's his basis. That's what he used. Okay. Yeah, and when when they started saying that, I hit up to everyone and say, "Don't say that. They're going to use this against us." And the pushback was, you know, well, no, they can't do anything. I'm like, "Well, he will." And and they have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're we're going to get these things uh Monday the 20th, right? Yes. We're go we're going to have this uh rally. How do you think that's going to play out? I think it's going to be really good. Uh, Antonia Okinfor mm -hmm. is going to be there speaking. So you show, so this video is probably going to get demonetized since I said her name. Oh, man, um, why'd you have to do it? Why'd you have to do it? Uh, Antonia Okinfor, a great defender of the Second Amendment, by the way. Also works for GOA. Yes, also does work for GOA, as, as do you, as do you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Stephen Williford is going to be speaking. He was the guy that stopped the Sutherland Springs shooting. Mm -hmm. Eric Pratt from GOA is going to be speaking. Phil Van Cleve is going to be speaking. Cam Edwards mm -hmm. is also going to be speaking there. It's going to be a, a big rally. A lot of people are going to shot, and they're taking the red eye out that night. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'll be at SHOT Show, but I'll be looking to see what um what, what happens out here. Um, I think this weekend you've got Maj Ture coming into Virginia at, at a rally? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it's not a rally. Uh, oh, okay. He's going to be teaching a activism workshop mm -hmm. uh, how to reach out, how to engage um, people. Oh, okay. Do you have any details on that? Yes. It's going to be from 2 to 4 at the Manassas Park uh, Community Center. You can find more information and sign up. It's totally free. Um, and that would be at bgm underscore virginia dot eventbrite dot com. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can reserve your spot because there's going to be a lot of people there. People coming from Maryland and D.C. are going to be coming because it's very close to D.C. Okay. And after the class, everyone's going to hit the street to wear comfortable shoes and we're going to pit what Maj teaches into practice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Maj is not someone who's talking about something he doesn't know. 
how yeah. to do. He definitely knows how to do this. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna he's be been very it. effective with uh, with Black Guns Matter um, and his other endeavors. Yeah, GOA and Black Guns Matter is going to be doing a tour of Virginia, hitting up different mm-hmm. areas around Virginia in the coming weeks and months. Okay, very cool. Now, before we move on from the from the Virginia thing, I mean, I definitely want to get your take on what's happening here with uh, with the governor do- governor doing this. But I also want to include this because I'm hearing some rumors that West Virginia is trying to get the counties uh, that created these sanctuary um, these sanctuary counties inside of Virginia to secede, I guess, and go over to West Virginia. Well, Have you well, heard anything of, about this? Yeah, some of the counties. They're having votes to mm-hmm. say they want to become part of West Virginia. Mm-hmm. So it's more of the counties themselves saying it, mm-hmm. but they're non-binding revolutions. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask you. What is the uh, likelihood that we're actually going to see most of Virginia go over and join West Virginia? Zero. Physically as a state. <laughs> It's just symbolic. Okay, symbolic. Okay, all right. But what do you? So what do you think about that? Uh, I think any message we can send to the governor that we don't like his policies is a good message. Mm-hmm. The Democrats started getting cold feet with a lot of this gun control. If you mm-hmm. look at who who the top donors to the Democrats is, you can go to like like open like opensecrets.org mm-hmm. or all these other type of websites where you can see the donors. Mm-hmm. And the number one donor on all these Democrats is like every town, which mm-hmm. is a Bloomberg organization. Right. And like usually the number two donor is Michael Bloomberg. Mm-hmm. 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 So he's double dipping there by using his uh, pack, pack to uh, yeah. donate. That's one of the big issues we have with Bloomberg. I mean, I think here in Florida, we've been having issues with him trucking in a bunch of money, even to the Republicans we have here, and getting them to to push more and more gun control just by, obviously, he's he's funding Democrats here, but the, 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 the real um, interesting and I think terrible part of it is that he's also giving money to Republicans, and they're taking that money and pushing gun control in our direction. Yeah, before we get to that, uh, mm-hmm. Bloomberg actually showed up the day before the session started mm-hmm. to meet with Democrats to encourage them to pass gun control and also met mm-hmm. with the governor. Mm-hmm. So if he bought he bought Virginia, basically. He bought Colorado. He bought Virginia. He's going to try to buy Texas. Mm-hmm. He's in the process of trying to buy Florida. Right. He's running for president. We're seeing, um, you know, we're, we're seeing his ads popping up all over the place. Uh yeah, he's he's got a lot of money to burn here, obviously, to take America in the direction of uh, tyranny, socialism for sure, um, and, and you know, if not communism, very close to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what? So before we do jump over to the Florida thing, what's your what's your your uh, your thoughts here on what's happening in Virginia right now? What I think's going to happen is some of the stuff is going to get watered down. Some of the stuff is going to get totally scrapped. The Mm -hmm. gun control stuff, I can't tell you what, but Mm -hmm. that's just a feeling I have. After some of the stuff passes, I'm sure that it's going to be challenged in state court Mm -hmm. as well as federal court. I think we have a good chance in state court because the Virginia Constitution, Article 1, Section 13, is very strong on the Second Amendment right. Mm -hmm. It actually defines who the militia is, and it defines the militia as every able body person in Virginia separate hmm. from the standing military. That's interesting, yeah. So technically, <laughs> everybody every standing able body person, you know, is part of the militia, so they yeah. have the right to be armed and be prepared. Yeah, to that's fight. not part of the military. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you so you think because of that it's gonna go a little different. Um yeah, because there's some conservative judges in Virginia, and if you get the right one, they can always issue an injunction. And the Supreme Court, even though they're not super conservative, they do lean towards conservative issue, and and they do lean towards the um, pro-gun side more than the anti-gun side. Mm-hmm. 
So you think the Democrats here are going to ram this through no matter uh, the protests, although I still, you know, I would I would say that folks need to get out there, protest, vote, pay attention. Uh, just voting alone, like with Republicans, I don't think is good enough. You need to make sure these guys who you're supporting are strong uh, constitutionalists. They believe in the Second Amendment, etc. But you think regardless of the outcry in Virginia, they're going to push this through and then it's going to wind up in the courts? I think some of it it will. Okay, some of it. You think, oh, you're, so you're saying it's going to get watered down and whatever yeah, exists from it, it'll be in the courts to deal with, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from what I'm hearing, there is a couple bills that have some type of resistance mm-hmm. from some of the Democrats because they're afraid because they're in red districts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm really worried about this when I hear and see the video that's coming out, how these pe- these folks feel about um, those of us in the gun community. It's, you know, it, it worries me, but it's happening all over the country, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One guy, um, I got a video up on my channel at John Crump, too. You can go watch it. Dave Marston, mm-hmm. who called us little children and not to listen to us and just let us talk. And ignore us. Mm-hmm. And then in an email, he said that gun owners are mentally deranged. Then he went on the radio and doubled down on that and said, oh, I shouldn't have said it privately. I should have said it publicly. Publicly, yeah. That's his only regret. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's terrible. Okay, so quickly to switch over to what's happening here in Florida. Um, you know, we had two years ago, we had gun control uh, measures put into effect here in Florida, uh, regardless of the fact of us trying to resist that. Uh, our governor at the time, uh, Rick Scott, signed it into law, but it was pushed through by Republicans. Um, and now, once again, we have more gun control stuff being pushed through by Republicans in Tallahassee. Um, now, the, what they call the gun show loophole, they want to close it. And the stuff that they want to put through is so bad that Marion Hammer of the NRA, who, you know, I, I, I hate to say this, man, but the NRA opened some of this, uh, they open up the possibilities of some of this here in Florida. But she thinks it, it you know, it's, it's the most terrible, most draconian stuff that she's seen. I'm trying to uh, pull up a quote here. Uh, yeah, the measure contains the worst universal background check language I've ever seen. You know, that's a quote from her. And so basically, there's um, there there was a there was a, a panel here in Florida that that allowed or a committee I should say that put this through and it had five Republicans on it and three Democrats, and this was this was pushed through unanimously by the Republicans. I believe one of them. Someone told me that one of them. Uh, walked out. So I think that was Senator Aaron Bean. He walked out. I don't understand that. I think he should have voted no and stayed there. So I don't really know what's going on. But that allowed them to say it was unanimous. But Senator Tom Lee, Republican, voted for it. Senator Keith Perry, which is my uh, senator here. Um, uh, Senator Ed Hooper and Senator Travis Houston voted for this. And now they're trying to push this forward here in Florida to become law. What do you think about that? Have you been looking into any of this? Yeah, I mean, the fingerprints of Bloomberg fell over that, too. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of fun. Oh, doing lobbying, you realize one thing. Uh, most laws are not actually written by the politicians. Mm-hmm. They're given to them by lobbyists. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, every town or mom's demand action will give them a pre-written thing, and then yeah. they just file it as theirs. Yeah. So how, how is this happening? How are we losing control over these politicians um, that tell us they believe in the Constitution, tell us they believe in the Second Amendment? You know, how are we losing control and these guys are uh, gaining control of them? Is it just money? Yeah. It's just like, uh, who, who said it? Puffy all about the Benjamins? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, Puffy yeah. Daddy, I guess. That, that's all. That's what it's about, man. It's about the dollars. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, and I'm trying to do the best that I can do to get people in Florida to be active to this. This stuff is happening in Florida, it's happening in Virginia, it's happening in Georgia. I feel like every pro-gun state around the country right now is under attack heavily um, by Bloomberg and, and others out there that are, that are planning to try to push us in the direction of Australia and other places around the world. Um, you well, know. well, look at it this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, these politicians go into office— and they're regular people like you and I that they're not super rich or anything. And when they come out of office, they're worth millions of dollars. Yeah. Funny how that works, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, and we're worse off for it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is suggest that um, if you're in a state where this stuff is affecting you, do what you can do to get this out there and, and be active. Pay attention to the things that are happening. The worst, the the least you could do is um, help share this and get every get everyone else to realize what's going on. I feel like because the media doesn't cover these kind of things anymore, or they definitely don't cover it in a balanced way. Um, uh, in a lot of cases, folks are getting away with this, right? So the thing we can do to combat that is to get out there and make everyone aware of what it is. And then there's other things that you could do. Talk to these politicians, get down there, vote, protest against them, call them up, let them know that you're, you're not, uh, you don't support any of this stuff. I don't know what your suggestions are on that, John. Yeah, email, call, everything like that. Uh, create pressure not only on your state level but go to your local county board or your mm -hmm. local city and try to get them to pass a second a second amendment uh section or sanctuary ordinance mm -hmm. if you need help with that you can always go to gunownersaction.org forward slash saso and there's a sample of a saso there and there's a way that you can start a petition to get your county or city to become a Second Amendment sanctuary. Yeah, and if you're neighbors with these guys, um, if you see them, a lot of times uh, these like these state politicians, man, they have to get out there and get our votes. When you see these people, you need to let them know that you're aware of what they're doing. You do not support it. Um, and in, in my case, like I don't care, you know, if if that person's a Republican, let's say, and they're putting in. Um, gun control, I'm not voting for them. They're just not going to get my support. The, 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 the threat that they use is if we don't vote for them, then Democrats will get in there and we'll get bad stuff. And then we vote for them and, and they're in there and we get bad stuff anyway. So, Yeah, it's work. like, if, well, if, if you don't vote for me, the Democrats are going to get elected. And that's why I'm running on these anti-gun stuff. It's like, then what does it matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but absolutely. Care about issues, not the letter next to your name. Yeah, absolutely. Don't just feel safe because of that. You know, I think you need to keep an eye on everyone that's out there from the president all the way down. Very important for folks to get out there and vote and be aware of what's going on. Do your research, know who these people are, and then hold them accountable to uh, to what they're doing. Um, you know, I think it's a really important thing. I, the last thing I want to talk about is SHOT Show. It's cool. I'm going there. Uh, but I think that if we don't support the Second Amendment here, then we're not going to be able to own any of these cool things. So it's all going to yeah. go away. Um, are you guys, I, I know Ammo Land's going to SHOT Show, right? Yeah. Uh, and the people that are going to the rally, I think most of us are catching mm -hmm. the red eye mm -hmm. out the shot that night. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. Wow. It's gonna that's going to be interesting. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see you out there at SHOT Show. Amoland News will be there. You said you're going to catch a red eye and be out there, so you'll be there for the rest of the week. Yeah, I'll okay. be there for the first day. Okay, but we'll be definitely getting uh, coverage from you guys out there. I'm looking forward to that. Um, is there anything at SHOT Show that – I know you're busy with all the stuff going on in Virginia. Um, is there anything at SHOT Show you're interested in here, excited to see? I want to go take a look at the uh, Colt Python. Okay, yes, okay. Been hearing some things about that. Been hearing some of them aren't working so great. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm hearing. So that's kind of why I want to talk to them about it. Uh huh. Okay. All right. You got some ideas. <laughs> you can help them yeah. out. And I think Henry's coming out with a couple rifles. One I have right yeah. in my gun room. So. Yeah. Um. I don't. Henry doesn't do shot show. Henry rifles. So boot prop. No, Henry Rifles, no. They, I don't think for a few years they haven't been doing SHOT Show. Now, they probably will be releasing stuff, Yeah. but I don't think they'll be actually at the show. So maybe we'll we'll see those things in other venues. Yeah, I yeah. gotcha. Yeah, maybe right after SHOT Show, et cetera, we'll be seeing some things from them. I'll be out there myself. If anyone, if there's anything that folks are interested in, you can reach out to us on social media, et cetera. I always recommend that folks go to the HankStrange.com site that we have. I've been working on that, trying to, you know, the best as I can, get stuff up there for the people who want to see all the different things that we have going on and how to communicate with us. So I recommend any, if you, if you, if there's things, you can put it here in this video or use any of the social media or go there and reach out to us. We've got our email list there that you can go and sign up to get up on our email list. But uh, 
If there's anything out there that you're interested in, uh, let me know and I'll try to cover it. How can the folks out there get in touch with you or where should they follow you, John? Uh, they can follow me on Amoland. If you go to Amoland, mm -hmm. go down to all contributors, you can see John Crump on there. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, Real John Crump. Or uh, I have a YouTube channel where I do like a little 2A mm -hmm. centric show. Mm -hmm. John Crump 2 on YouTube. Okay, very cool. And if you run into me in Shot Show, if I have any left, you might get, you know, one of our new patches. I don't know. It depends. Oh. While supplies last, I'm, I'll bring a few of these out there with me. So we just got those. We just got those in for anyone who's interested. I'll bring a few of my patches. Oh, check it out. No quarter for tyrants. Oh, I like it. Listen, I believe in the pirate flag, man. Yeah. Pirate flag is always a good thing. All right, cool. So um, I don't know if there's anything else you need to add here, anything else you need to remind folks of? Uh, no, no, that, that's it. Uh, just make sure that you support your local gun organization, whether mm -hmm. it's VCDL or, in your case, like Florida Carry. Yeah, lots of good organizations out there fighting for a Second Amendment in all these states, right? Yeah, and uh, then support some of the national organizations. Absolutely. I G G gun owners in America, but I'm kind yeah. of fine. Gun owners, absolutely. All of coalition of another good one. Yeah. Second Amendment Foundation. Yeah. Pick yeah. Heavy. Absolutely. Do it. Do that's a. I think right now the best place to, um, the best thing to do with your money. Uh, show some support to all the folks who are out there uh, fighting for this. Also keeping you appraised of everything that's going on since we can't rely on the media to do it. We haven't been able to do that in a while. All right, so that's it. I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, if you want to see more about this, we are going to go live. Uh, we're going to do a podcast tonight and talk about some of this stuff. You guys can join us there. You can check out our coverage um, that, that we throw up on all the different platforms. Uh, we're out of here. I'll see you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you can be notified. Anything you want to remind people of, Crump? Nope. No? Okay, there you go. All right, we're out. See ya.